Hello there, my name is Mac Horse, and welcome to another Blockbuster Tips video. Here is one of my body actors with me, and we're going to show you how to use animated poses. Hey, where do you think you're going? Anyways, this is how it works, let's say you have a Blockbuster model morph, it could be an OBJ, or even a Vox model, which you can pose, and then you have the same morph, but with a different pose. When you morph an actor with the first morph into the second morph, with animated poses option enabled, instead of spontaneously switching to the pose, it will smoothly animate all limbs from the original pose into the final pose. So, what can you do with it? A lot of things. Animal revolution? Check. Acrobatics? Check. Fighting scenes? Um, difficult yet possible. Check. Drama. Ha ha. Yes. Now let me show you how you can set it up. Here I have an actor who's played from a scene. By the way, if you use director blocks, stop using them. This message was brought to you by the scenes gang. At the moment, it's just default Steve with no pose selected. To demonstrate the feature in the simplest way, I'll set up a sequencer morph, and give it two different morphs, the ones I've shown you a moment ago. As you can see, these two are just rapidly switch. However, if we'll enable animates checkbox, this will activate the animated poses feature, and it'll smoothly animate the pose. At this moment, though, it animates only into one direction. We need to enable animates checkbox on the second morph as well. And here you have, those are the basics of animated poses. Beside animated checkbox, there are a couple of other options regarding animation. The duration field allows you to specify for how many ticks the pose animation will run for. There are 20 ticks per second. If you morph the actor into another animated pose without letting the first pose to finish, it will start animating where the animation left, rather than from the final position. Pick interpolation button opens a drop down with different interpolations for the animated poses. An interpolation allows to change the way pose go from one point to another. Here is the demonstration of different interpolation types with same duration, but in essence you need to experiment with these. And final property is ignore checkbox. What it does is allows you to ignore animation properties in this morph and let you change any of other morph settings without interrupting the animation. Let's say you want to launch a 5 second animation, but you also want to change skin at multiple times during the animation, but you don't want to interrupt it. If you enable ignored, you can freely change skins during the animation, and the pose animation won't get affected. Beside using sequences for repeated animated poses, you can as well use player recording editor, to add animated poses at specific ticks in the editor. At the moment, I still haven't made a video about player recording, but you do it something like this. Open Aperture's camera editor, click on the record icon, select player recording you wish to edit, and start adding, editing and removing actions. You can add new actions from the list of actions, select any action in timeline and edit its data in the panel, duplicate an action, drag and drop the action to another tick, and remove them. That's the gist of it. Now let's talk about common pitfalls when using animated poses. Number 1. When setting up sequences or editing a player recording, make sure to keep track of how much ticks it takes for animation to run, or otherwise it might end too soon and jittery. Animates checkbox is not cascading, meaning, if you have body parts with animated poses, you need to manually enable animates option in every nested morph to get that effect. Speaking of body parts, you need to have the same amount of body parts in order for body parts to smoothly animate, and they should be in the same order. If you add a new morph, make sure to create an empty body part in the previous and consequent morph to guarantee the smoothness of animation.
and final pitfall I'm aware of, a common misconception is that if you add a body part morph with animated poses, body parts transformation will animate as well, which doesn't work. You need to edit the morph, and change its pose in order to actually change animated poses final position. Those were the pitfalls, now let's talk about other things worth mentioned before you start using this feature. Since Blockbuster 1.6.1 there was added a default model called Empty, it's a model with a single invisible limb, which can be used for animation of morphs that don't support animated poses. It's also useful for creating spinning things. The trick for creating seamless spinning animation is to create two morphs in a sequencer. First should have zero ticks duration in both sequencer menu and edit morph menu, and animates checkbox disabled. While the second morph should have animates checkbox enabled. Same amount of ticks for sequencer menu and edit morph menu, while having a pose that does a full circle, that is 360 degrees. This will seamlessly reset the pose to original value. Emoticons morphs also support animated poses in the same way as Blockbuster does, but without the ignore checkbox. Well, I hope this video has shown you how to use animated poses clear enough. This is a very simple to use, yet hard to master feature. Play around with different durations and interpolations and see how it works out. Thanks for watching, and close your social media apps when you want to be productive.